students of Hualien City University visits the Philippines for volunteer work. And a volunteer couple in Taiwan remains determined in walking the city path despite the obstacles along the way. Welcome to Da Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Taiwan, when the Weather Bureau announced Typhoon Sulik was to hit the country in mid-July, Xinzhu City volunteers hurried to visit their care recipients, making sure they were informed of the coming storm. In the aftermath, volunteers paid return visits to check on everyone and also bought relief supplies as road conditions had not fully returned to normal. In Taiwan, in the aftermath of Typhoon Sulik, the road leading to Jianshi Xinzhu has not been completely cleared of rubble and debris. However, city volunteers' love and care moves all obstacles as they bring with them relief supplies for each care recipient. <laughs> When the typhoon hit, the house leaked from the rain. Afterwards, Tiji brothers and sisters came to the house to check up on me. I am grateful for them from the bottom of my heart. In the mountain regions of Jianshi Township in Xinzhu, the residents mostly live in metal corrugated housing. The latest typhoon brought strong winds and rain, which left many residents quaking in fear. Oh, our roof is made from corrugated metal, and when the wind and rain came, my two daughters and I were worried that the roof was going to fall in because a tree branch kept hitting it. We thought it was rocks hitting the roof. Volunteers also bring with them rice and food while checking in on the residents. City volunteers continue to take care of me and help me out as my wife is ill. I really don't know what to do as I have to work to make a living, so I'm grateful for Tsuji. Tsuji volunteers once again show these recipients their love and care, hoping to warm their hearts for days to come. A group of 19 students from Hualien City University are spending their holidays in a meaningful way by joining team of members and city volunteers on a trip to the Philippines for volunteer work. The students not only visited dreamland villages, but also took part in a rice distribution where they all gained valuable life lessons. Despite not understanding the Chinese lyrics, the children of dreamland village sing and dance along with the volunteers. We see how adorable these children are, and as they follow what we do, I can feel their energetic vibe. Though we dance the same song many times, we become more energetic and happier as well. Coming from afar, these students not only bring joy and happiness, but also teach children about dental hygiene. I learned that I need to cut down on my salt and sugar intake and also the proper way to brush teeth. We were supposed to brush two teeth at a time. These brothers and sisters are great at teaching us and their performance was wonderful. 19 students of Hualien City University seized their summer vocation to join team of medical staff and city volunteers on a trip to the Philippines for volunteer work. We are really glad that we have the opportunity to come and that they are willing to give us the opportunity to serve them. To get the most out of their overseas trip, these students also take part in a rice distribution and experience the joys of giving. In the process of handing out the rice, though we are the givers, it feels like we gain much more in return. Seeing how happy residents were deeply moved me. Seeing the children here living in such a difficult environment, yet remaining so positive and cheerful, I really admire them. I think regardless of where we live, we should all cherish what we have. Seeing the tough living conditions of dreamland villages, these students from Taiwan realize how blessed they are and all vow to pass on their love to those in greater need. Also making the most of their summer holiday are a few members of the City Teachers Association who have decided to volunteer at the Hualien City Hospital. Earlier this week, they visited 90-year-old Grandpa Wu's home, bringing much laughter and joy to the senior couple. <laughs> In Grandfather Wu's home in Hualien, Taiwan, 
a group of volunteers sing an old patriotic song, which inspires the senior to talk about his days during the war. Your presence has brought much joy to our hearts. You've even brought a smile to his face. He's in such a good mood now. Normally he's shut up inside and doesn't come out of his room. I'm very happy to see him like this. It's been a while since I've seen him having fun. Because Grandfather Ru suffers from cancer, he has had to go through nine surgeries over the past 13 years. To make matters worse, his only son suffered a stroke last year, and the family's finances took a turn for the worse. Now the burden of taking care of the too, lies on Grandma Wu's shoulders. We are comforted that she's optimistic. She only gets upset that her son suffered a stroke from too much drinking. The visit from members of the Tsuji Teachers Association brought a ray of sunshine into the household. Meanwhile, the teachers were also able to learn from this activity. This is really seeing suffering to cherish blessings. Being a teacher, we mostly lecture, we occasionally listen, but basically we are kings of the classroom here. However, it's mostly listening and speaking less. I think in communication or in comforting others, the hardest thing to do is listen quietly. In switching roles, these teachers are continuing their education, recharging their spirits and getting ready to face students in September with a renewed sense of mission. This year's Tsuji Global Humanitarian Education Training Seminar is held at the Santong Tsuji Grounds in New Taipei City, with over 130 teachers from eight countries participating. To ensure the smooth running of the four-day event, volunteers who worked behind the scenes divided themselves into San Tim teams in her that these teachers may take what they have learned back home. Volunteers at the Tsuji Sanchong Grounds are touching up on final preparations before the start of the Tsuji Global Humanitarian Education Training Seminar so that the 137 trainees from eight different countries may feel closer to home. Although this year's trainees are fewer in number, members of Taiwan's Tsuji Teachers Association still mobilized a significant number of volunteers in the planning and execution of the seminar. Once our guest speakers finish their presentation, everyone will break into small groups and enact what they have just learned. It gives everyone an opportunity to observe and learn from each other. The first trainee to arrive is Li Shixiong from Hong Kong. As for his expectations for the four-day seminar, this is what he has to share. I hope this year we can learn more ways of implementing Jin's aphorisms and their message. I want to promote these teachings in Hong Kong and hope to develop suitable teaching materials locally. Next, we travel to Nantou, Taiwan, to learn the story of city volunteers Liu Guozhang and Chou Bi Duan. Several years ago, the elderly couple turned part of the orange tree orchard into a community recycling station. There, there the couple could be found every day sorting the recyclables that were brought in from around the community. Unfortunately, in May of this year, Liu Guozhang suffered a stroke that left him without the ability to talk or even walk. Thus, Chou Bi Duan quit her job to take care of her husband full time and even considered closing down the recycling station. However, local volunteers stepped in to run the station in the couple's absence and are waiting the day when Liu can come home and once again work in his beloved recycling station. Here's more on this touching story of love and commitment. That day when I came home, it was already late. No lights were on in the house, so I came out here to the recycling station and found my husband on the ground. I called an ambulance right away. It hurts me to see how hard the rehab is for him, but I am always there to encourage him and to help him. In the past, I never paid attention to his health, and to see him now is so hard to take. Before her husband fell sick, Cho Bi Duan worked as a nursing assistant that made house calls. I decided I would feel more comfortable if I could take care of him myself, so I quit my job to take care of him full time. 
and while Cho has been able to take care of her husband's body, she has been unable to put his mind at rest. At that time, the neighbors questioned why my husband, who has done so much for Tsuji, still suffered a stroke. Around that time, I believed that I would no longer be able to do recycling. And soon after, Cho decided she would close down the recycling station. <sighs> <laughs> Don't cry, we're waiting for you to come home to drive the recycling truck. Don't get yourself down, it will only make it harder to get through this time. When we mention the recycling station, he will start crying. Although Liu Guozhang can no longer talk, Cho Biduan still has no trouble understanding her husband. He was always at the recycling station doing recycling. It was always on his mind. Even though he is here now, in his heart, he wants to be back at the recycling station. It's his life. It is this hope that keeps Cho and her husband working hard at his rehabilitation. I use this as a time to train my own heart. Going through this time with my husband is a form of training for me. Cho Biduan and her husband Liu Guozhang have been together for 36 years and are still very much in love. We used some of our land to set up a recycling station. What was once an orange tree orchard became a recycling station. After her husband had his stroke, there was no one here, so I couldn't stand seeing the recycling station so empty, so I decided to take over until he gets better and comes home. This is where he fell, and this is also going to be where he picks himself back up. New vows are taken and new hope is found. <laughs> Master Zhen Yan, don't worry, my husband and I will get through this. <laughs> Moving to China every month, Guangdong's Puning Tsuji volunteers hold a recycling day not only to keep the planet clean, but also as an opportunity to recruit more recycling volunteers to join their course. This month's recycling day saw 32 volunteers participate, and over 60% of them were first-timers. Although new at categorizing recyclables, everyone enjoyed the experience and even vowed to keep up with the practice once back home. Putting on a pair of work gloves, Zhang Jianping joins Guangdong Tsuji volunteers on a recycling day. This is his first experience sorting recyclables. I feel great. It's better to actually do recycling than to hear about it. Everyone is busy sorting recyclables at the monthly recycling day at this glass factory in Guangdong's Puning. This time, volunteer Wang Xue Hong invited her neighbors to join. It's great to practice recycling. I do it at home too. I've also recruited my neighbors. They will bring recyclables to me, and then Tiji Brothers will come pick them up from my house. Volunteers not only sort the recyclables, but also keep their eyes open for items that they can reuse. This formula can is very useful as it is metal. We can reuse it by covering the outside with a computer made label, make a hole here and then turn it into a piggy bank. We've collected a few things that can be reused, so we're going to set up a second hand area. There are a lot of flat boards that we can use as shelves here to make this area a second hand area. There are a lot of ideas for us to reuse items. It looks like the traditional ways of cherishing items is making a comeback as a modern recycling concept. It is with an unwavering heart and a sense of mission that has carried the Tsuji media team 10 years into its establishment and towards the next decade. Behind this team of professionals, we learn how senior media volunteers recruit others to join their ranks. <laughs> At this beginner's course for Northern District Media Volunteers, Wu Ming Lun shares his film editing techniques with newly joined media volunteers. We encourage them to nurture a habit of organizing video files into categories. If we have a proper file management system, they can easily access any file they need whenever they need it. Wu Minglun shares all that he knows without reservation, as he himself once stumbled blindly on this path. When I was editing a video clip for the 2003 year-end blessing ceremony, it gave me such a headache. We had plenty of footage that had been transferred onto the computer, but it was saved all over the place. We didn't know where the usable files were saved. 
there was no system. As the team leader of the designated topic team, Wu's kindergarten is often transformed into a team meeting venue. Every time we called on Brother Wu to give us a lesson, he always gave us his support. He knew by our call that we obviously hit a stumbling block. The Northern District team for the Living Bodhisattvas program gathered at the Central Retreat Office. Now we meet at four different retreat offices and there are about six media teams at each office. This method is the only way to ensure success. Previously, media volunteers would organize workshops within their communities to discuss how to integrate their manuscripts, images, and film. Since 2011, the editorial group set up by the Northern District media team gathers once a month to amalgamate their records. Before, when we were integrating our work, we often came across a good shot, but we didn't know who the person was in the photo. Or we come across manuscripts which were well written and the stories were inspiring, but there were no photos or footage. Everyone has their own strengths, and if we combine them together, the result will be 1 plus 1 is greater than 2. Everyone has displayed growth and humility through this process of cooperation. Speaking eloquently and passing down their know-how, many senior volunteers have come a long way. And now they are mentors to the newly joined media volunteers. We hope that each volunteer will find happiness in their tasks and find a sense of accomplishment and confidence in themselves. We also hope that they will pass down their experience and lead others with patience and love. Here in Taiwan's Northern District are some 1,800 media volunteers, most of whom who started out knowing little but are now professionals today. The companionship and camaraderie has also been the senior volunteers' main selling points in the recruitment of future volunteers. In our next report, we meet media volunteer Tu Feng Mei, who is known to her fellow volunteers as a superwoman. Taking photos at Tiji's event, she is able to carry some 10 kilos of photography equipment on her own. Before she started serving as a photographer, Tu already had some 10 years of experience in writing scripts for the Buddhist NGO. Around the same time, Tu not only began attending a photography class, but also organized a script writing class to pass on her skills to fellow volunteers. This evening, I have a writing class for the media volunteers in Taoying. I am now revising their scripts. I often use the computer to type and edit scripts and edit photos too. I also search for photography books on the internet because I want to improve my skills. Concentration is crucial. It is also necessary to look for reference books for self-study. Taking photos is quite interesting. Would you like to try? Shoot anything you like. What about this teacup? Now let me show you mine. In this photo, we want to create a blurry depth of field, so we take a close-up shot. See, isn't it better? I do cycling a lot to improve my stamina, and at each media event, I also get a lot of exercise because the equipment is heavy. Some people say I am a superwoman. Even if I carry some 10 kilos of photography equipment, my movements are quite still agile. Many Tsuji sisters wonder how it is possible that a woman in her 50s is able to carry so much and still walk so fast. Even men have difficulty in keeping up with me. Typhoon Suli caused some damage to our crops. But today, from what I've seen, these crops are still doing well. I am now taking close-up shots of the plants, so I put on the zoom lens. You never know what situation you'll encounter, and that's why I bring all my equipment along. I hope I will be improving year by year. As a media volunteer, I expect myself to serve as a flexible team player who can fill in wherever needed.
。大家晚安。I am very interested in writing. Many people think writing is difficult. Since I have been involved in writing scripts for Tsuchi for 10 years, I feel obliged to inspire more people to join. So I organized this writing class. Seeing their improvements, I feel happy for them. Other than writing, I also learn photography so that I can fill in if needed. Two and a half years ago, I started attending a photography class. When we take photos at Tsuji's events, we have to ensure the people in the photos are clear. But I thought there must be something else other than the clarity of the photos. When you press the shutter, what's the message you are trying to tell your viewers? To be a media volunteer, you have to be perseverant and never give up. You have to keep moving forward. In the United States over the past year and a half, the city U.S. headquarters organized a training program for volunteers who wish to learn the Buddhist prayer instruments. Earlier this month, trainees were given the opportunity to lead others in chanting Buddhist sutras, and their trial run turned out to be a success. Let's take a look. Leading believers in chanting Buddhist sutras is what lead chanters do. Today, the trainees are ready to give it their best shot after one and a half years of training. Before joining the training, Tsuji volunteer Li Yuefeng would have never believed that she one day would lead others in chanting sutras. The lead chanter has more obligations. I asked brother Tai Jing Hong if I could just focus on volunteer work. However, he encouraged me to give it a try. Senior volunteer Tai Jing Hong, despite being ill, still does his best to take on Tsuji's missions. His spirit inspired Sister Shen Lihua to keep working hard until one day she was ready to be a lead chanter. Brother Tai Jing Hong has devoted himself fully to Tsuji's work. Seeing that he is able to do so, why can't I? As the Tsuji volunteers provide assistance to the less fortunate around the globe, they still remember to keep cultivating the Dharma within and work on spreading the Buddhism far and wide. We go back to Taiwan at the end of today's program. In preparation of the upcoming Global Media Volunteers Training Seminar to be held in Hualien, city volunteers from around the island have returned to their spiritual homeland to help get the preparation work done. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.